he did a poo, which is, oh, that smells. Um, he did a poo, which is great. Lord. Hello, my name is Daisy Maskell, and this week I am fostering a dog. Looking after a dog for seven days is definitely gonna be a new experience for me. I have never welcomed a pet into my home before. Um, however, I have nothing to do. And so I thought there is no better time than the present right now. So what I did was I reached out to a guy called John. Now he owns a doggy daycare and he offered me his dog for the week. The concept of taking him from another owner, their absolute pride and joy um, was really, really daunting. Um, however, he reassured me that Loki is um, amazing. He's really, really well trained. And so everything should be fine. This could potentially be the best week or the worst week of my entire life. Up until 30 minutes ago, I was jumping for joy. Guys, in 30 minutes time, I'm about to go and pick up Loki. I'm falling apart. I am terrified. I'm so nervous. I feel like this is the stage. It's very similar to having children. Starts off as a great idea. Right now I'm at the stage of epidural and guys, there is no going back. I'm gonna be fine. I I'm honestly gonna be fine. Previous experience of caring for animals? None, but how hard honestly could it be? We're about to go pick up a doggy. I was so scared. There was a million and one things going through my mind. There was regret, there was excitement. So we arranged to meet John and Loki in a park that was local to the both of us halfway in between. And I was happy because Loki came up to my mom and I straight away. And so it was then time to say goodbye. Loki jumped into the back of the car with me and then John went on his way and that was the moment that it hit me. I was like, this is my responsibility now. What have I done? Guys, my life has peaked. Oh my God. He is the cutest thing in this world. Guys, meet Loki. How am I gonna give this dog back? I've had this dog for 20 minutes. I don't know how I'm gonna give him back. I'm obsessed. The car journey home, he was really good. He slept on my lap the entire time and I jumped out of the car to go and get some food supplies for the week. I came back in once I'd got my stuff and my mom said that he was actually pining for me at the window, which I was like, okay, cool, he trusts us. He's getting used to me and, and he's feeling a certain type of way towards me being in his presence already, which, was a massive positive because we'd only known each other for a couple of hours. So when we arrived at my house, I decided to take his bed out of the car that John had given to us and put it into my house already because I wanted him to walk in and see something that was familiar and feel as though he had a safe space that he knew was his. This bed looks so cozy. I feel like I'm getting so attached to him already that I might potentially stay in this room with him. Is that overstepping the boundary? I don't know. But this is cozy as in here. I'm so down for a little sleepover. John also gave him a little suitcase to come along with as well, which had loads of toys in. Look at his little suitcase with his toys. It also had pre-packaged food, which was really good. And he labeled it literally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in little freezer bags. He's bagged up his dinners as if it's like this Mills on Wheels service and you literally pierce the film, stick him in the microwave for 30 seconds. You're good to go. So I decided to stay downstairs the first night on the sofa. I sort of hid in our back room just in case he needed me. This protective parent, obsessive mum vibe um, that kicked in within the first couple of hours. Loki, come on, back to bed. Come on. Back in your bed. Come on. So I'm hoping that he's like drawing his luck and he's realising that I'm not gonna crack. Flash forward like <laughs> midway through the night and he's on the sofa with me sleeping. No, I'm trying to be a good dog mum, but so far so good. I think we're good. 
I was really, really adamant that I wanted to be a good dog owner. I wanted him to feel as though his normal routine was still taking place, even though he was out of his own home. Um, so I thought it was really important to stick to my guns and continue the training that John continues to do with him day to day. I'm gonna try and check on you without waking him up. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like pan you around the corner. Is he in bed? I can't see him. I think he's sleeping. Oh my god, we did it, we did it, we did it. First night. And he's in his bed right now. And he's staying there. So, moment of truth. Did Loki sleep in his own bed last night? Like a big boy. Yeah, you did. You slept in your bed. You were such a big boy. Yes, you are. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Mm. Are you going to have fun today? What are you going to do today? I was determined to check a few things off of a list whilst having Loki. I wanted to contribute to Loki's Instagram account and Loki has an existing Instagram and so we did some little photo shoots in the garden which was very fun. And he is a model, he knows how to pose. Yes, work it. He's over this already. The pose is real right now. Wow, hold it, hold it. You are posing. Day-to-day -day life was really interesting because I am quarantined and I'm in lockdown with my mum. So it's just the two of us in, in the house at the minute. And we sort of go about doing our day-to-day -day things that we need to do around the house. Uh, but having an extra, what felt like an extra person was really interesting. There was definitely a presence that we felt and we'd almost congregate around him. I also changed the content that I put on TV. I adapted it uh, for it to be dog friendly. So we watched a lot of Lady and the Tramp, uh, a lot of programs that featured dogs in heavily. And then I realized that he he had no interest in, in watching cartoons that predominantly featured dogs. At the start of this, I was really, really nervous about the poo situation. So the first time picking up his poo was an experience and I felt like it was something that I never quite got used to throughout the entire time that we had him. I just picked up my first ever dog poo. What do I do with it now? Look, you good boy. There always seemed to be a drama surrounding him pooing, whether it was him going to squat down on someone else's front lawn or me depositing the poo in the wrong place. So Ari, my dog poo drama. I walked out, I was like, oh my God, there's one. Guys, there's a letterbox. I was about to post a poo through a letterbox. Or me not being able to find a poo box and taking the poo home. Question, um, he did a poo, which is, oh, that smells. Um, he did a poo, which is great. But I didn't find a bin on the way home and I don't know where to put it. I'm home now and I didn't find a dog bin. So do I put it in the normal bin? I think I need to, I need to research this. I don't, I know you don't flush it. There was always something surrounding the poo. I think it takes longer than a week, maybe. Maybe it takes longer than seven days to, to get used to that as a concept. And maybe if I had him for an extended period of time, it would just be second nature to me. But it was just something that I really struggled to wrap my head around. One thing that John warned me of was the fact that he's a black lab and he sheds. There was hair everywhere. I didn't quite expect how much hair uh, was gonna come out of this dog. I don't know how to this day that he still has hair shedding like that on a day-to-day -day basis, but it was a lot. Right here is a day-to-day -day reality. Black lab hair everywhere, but 
I love him so much, I really don't care. I just didn't expect it to be a situation whereby we were hoovering and sweeping up by the hour. I think the setup of my house didn't help either. I had tiles, white tiles downstairs, so any little black hair would just show up straight away. I grew to love him so much that it just didn't matter. And after a couple of days, you, you're completely blind to it but it was a lot. So any owners out there that are looking to get a Labrador, they do shed. I've, I've just never seen anything like it. Oh my gosh. Loki, we love you. I think the hardest moment of having Loki was saying goodbye. That was something that I, towards the end of the week, I was really dreading. We grew to love him so quickly. We grew to welcome him into our family and into our home as if he was ours really, really quickly. We completely got to see the benefit of what a dog brings to just the overall vibe of a household and the way that he makes you feel as well. You know, you have something to get up for in the morning. You have someone that is relying on you and that has an expectation of you and that gets you out of the house. Loki spin. Loki sit. That's laid down, but good boy. The final day of having Loki was really hard. I had to pack up his bed and his toys. I'm having to pack up all of his toys and his bed into his little suitcase because he's going home. This is so sad. Oh my God, we're gonna miss him so much. Where are you going? You're going home now. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go home. Yeah? Yeah? What's going on? Come on then. Come on then. And the drive to drop him off to John was heartbreaking. It was so sad. It was it was genuinely a tearful moment. And I remember getting home and the house just felt empty. The the house felt sad and boring and lonely and and we sort of left his hair on the floor for a little bit because we missed him and I, I still find hairs to this day <laughs> that he left behind as a reminder. Um, of his love and of his appreciation. There is so much love that a dog can give you, unconditional love. You can walk into a room after, you know, minutes apart and they are just so happy to see you every single time. It just gives you such an incentive to want to do everything in your power to make that dog happy, whether that's going out on walks, whether that's playing in the garden, whether that's teaching them a new trick, whether that's putting little treats in their little chew bones. They completely become a massive part of your life. They become, they become like your child. And I think to a certain extent, that's the way I would want it to be when getting a dog in the future. And I hope, I really, really hope to be able to see them again soon.